And earlier I spoke to the Communications Minister Stephen Conroy from our Parliament House studio. Minister, welcome to the programme. Good to be with you. Well, all eyes are on Telstra reporting on Thursday. How confident are you that there will be a deal to be announced between NBNCO and Telstra? Well, we, uh, we expect that Telstra will give an update on where the negotiations are at on Thursday. Uh, I've maintained a very strict policy of not wanting to speculate on day-to-day -day, uh, stories that appear in the media around this. It's very sensitive commercially. It's very important for Telstra's shareholders. And we want to make sure that uh, we don't get a visit from the uh, gentleman at ASIC. Well, there's a lot of talk and muttering about missed deadlines. I mean, even if there is an announcement uh, on Thursday, uh, Telstra has told shareholders that they'll be able to vote on this by mid, uh, mid, th mid this year. But all this has got to get through the regulator as well. Are you confident that that will happen if a deal is, is announced soon? Well, I think there's a whole raft of things that still need to happen. Obviously, uh, a finalisation of any deal. Then there's legislation that's before the parliament that's important. And then there's uh, the regulators have to approve uh, a range of measures. So there's a, there are a whole raft of issues that are still before us. But I'd be confident that the Telstra shareholders will ultimately be able to uh, make their decision, have their vote uh, on that timetable that you outlined. Let's say it does go to shareholder approval mid-year. Now, we've got at least one analyst suggesting that institutional shareholders may not be willing to approve this deal and that it's not actually a good deal for Telstra. He points to the, the revenue stream that Telstra will get of, of $11 billion uh, for its fixed-line business and comparing that to the present value of the, of the growing payments it will need to be making to NBNCO. Well, I'm confident that if the board recommend it to its shareholders, that they will have a compelling case. And no one has seen any details because there isn't a finalised deal at this stage. So I'm confident that uh, when the full details of any final deal are put forward, if the Telstra board are recommended it, then they've taken into account all of those considerations when they put the statement out that they would be recommended it. Are you disappointed that Optus has said that it's going to be sitting on the sidelines until a deal is struck? Well, I don't always believe everything I read in uh, the newspapers. Uh, I'm in constant dialogue with most of the major telecommunications companies on a variety of issues, and they haven't said that to me. Should Telstra shareholders be concerned that Telstra might be left with a, a rump of voice-only customers uh, having to maintain this copper network? Well, the, the deal that we announced, which we're currently working through, and Telstra will update us on, on Thursday, talked about Universal Service Obligation Company, USOCO. That will be taking over the Universal Service Obligations in the 7%. And I think some of that speculation is just that speculation, and people should wait to see what the final uh, agreement, if there is one, uh, is reached. There are main concerns, Minister, about committing billions uh, of government money to fund a fibre optic network. Now, President Obama has come out, as you know, uh, recommending that America should take on uh, a, a privately, predominantly privately funded uh, 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 wireless uh, upgrade. Now, doesn't that um, uh, ring alarm bells for you that, that, that we are putting all our eggs in one basket here? Well, look, there's two or three things I'd like to say about that. Firstly, we welcome what President Obama has announced. We are currently negotiating and in the process of releasing a whole raft of spectrum for wireless broadband. So we don't have all our eggs in one basket. That's the first point. On the second point of whether that should ring alarm bells, the answer is no. I can simply point to a, a recent statement by Vint Cert, one of the people who is acknowledged as the father of the internet, when he said Australia's investment is stunning and that America's plans did not have anywhere near of the capacity of ours. The NBN, if it's built, will be a massive civil engineering project. You yourself have talked about 25,000 full-time jobs. Now, how on earth are you going to resource this when you've got, uh, balancing on the other side, an enormous need for um, a rebuild following the cyclone and the flood? Aren't you going to have an incredible skill shortage? Every 
company in Australia that's involved in any degree of construction is faced with exactly this constraint. What the government did when we announced our recent package to support the reconstruction in both Queensland and other areas that have been affected was we pulled back in some areas. We recognised that there were going to be capacity constraints. We've also been talking about the need for retraining existing workers. We're putting, as but, part of the this, package we're this, talking this about with Telstra, is retraining. We've got $100 million to retrain existing staff but so even, that they Minister, can start even the measures that you're, make, you're, you're suggesting now are surely not going to make up for it. You're going to have to do something uh, much more drastic, aren't you? Will, you? will you need to, for instance, relax uh, the 457 visa guidelines? Well, those are other policy issues and other portfolio areas, but we are but saying that the national, the national broadband network and the NBN Co company will face exactly the same constraints on both skilled and unskilled labour as every other company involved in mining, involved in the reconstruction work. This will be a slow build-up over a number of years. And so we think the economy will manage it, but NBN Co are very conscious of these challenges. They are focused on them and they are working with the industry to ensure that we can deliver on all of our commitments. Senator Conroy will follow with interest this year. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks very much. Good to be with you.